All of us know of many in our society who desire to do good for others and who care for the less fortunate. The question is, how will the Ministry partner with the private and people sectors to create more opportunities for Singaporeans to step forward and in the process enable Singaporeans to contribute meaningfully? Singapore Cares has what I think is simple but very difficult goal to make doing good a sticky form of behaviour, to make volunteering, make thinking about the good of others a habit of mind and a way of life. About one in five people volunteered in 2014. This is up from one in ten in the year 2000. This is good news. But often we have one-off one projects that may have been started by an enthusiastic group of whose initial fire, initial fire has dimmed. Such projects are laudable, but if ad hoc, not as powerful as they should be. We need such efforts to be embedded within the structures of our social life. What I have in mind is something like Singapore Cares, which treats people who need help as part of the Singapore family and sees our commitment in time and effort supported by different social groups from families, schools, companies and grassroots organisations. Can I ask the Minister for an update on SG Cares, what has been done in the past year since its launch and what his plans are for the future? In particular, I would like to ask the Minister what data he plans to collect to measure not just the number of volunteers but the stickiness of programmes and whether volunteers prefer to stick to one particular type of activity or prefer to try out different things. For example, although volunteerism is on the rise, only 29% of respondents aged 25 to 34 volunteered for a social cause in 2016. This compares with 48% of those aged 35 to 44. Why such a contrast? Do younger people have less time for volunteering as they begin their careers and families? If so, what sort of volunteering opportunities are there for them? I have an idea especially for people who have never volunteered or who see lack of time as an impediment to doing so. Micro-volunteering, where tasks are completed by a volunteer in small increments of time at his own pace. They are in short bursts and bite-sized activities, anything from baking a cake for fundraising, graphic design for a charity logo, to knitting beanies for premature babies, or counting plant and animal species for non-profit or research and data gathering, depending on the needs. While micro-volunteering may appear to go against the long-term commitment I spoke about earlier, it is in fact a, usual, a useful complement. Such activities are a good way to start the journey and may lead to a longer-term commitment in the future. Such volunteers also bolster the core group during peak times. Sir, I do not advocate any particular model, but I do think all volunteering helps to help community and social ties. This is always useful because thinking about the good of others and not just ourselves is a vital part of what it means to build a country.